Welcome to Hearthstone Live. I'm here every Tuesday to bring you the best content weekly. Be sure to subscribe on YouTube, search for Team Shirtless Mike, and follow on Facebook at Shirtless Mike. You can reach out to me on Instagram at Shirtless Mike 2020. See what goes on in my life, and hopefully, I can see what goes on in yours. Hearthstone Live is expanding. Get your product in front of hundreds of viewers every single week. Let me advertise your cigar or product to my audience. DM me. Let's exchange information and get you a part of the Team Shirtless Mike team. What is going on, everybody out there? So I'm going to give some folks a few minutes because, you know, we just went live and everything. We got some people already starting to tune in here in a moment. But uh, I hope everybody out there in Florida that you know, my fellow Floridians, I hope that everybody that was in the affected hurricane areas, I hope you're doing well. Um, if you still don't have power, if you still don't have internet, it's it's fine. I won't be mad at you for not being able to tune in. You could always catch up on this show later on. You know, my heart and my prayers goes out to each and every person that was affected by the hurricane because over here on the East Coast, uh, we didn't have that same type of um, you know, the same type of luck, you know, over here. So, uh, shouts out to my boy, Kevin Shahan from Cigar Prop, my dude, I know you're still getting things, uh, squared away when, you know, when it comes to the damage from the hurricane and, you know, just trying to get things settled, brother, you and Jess, you guys are on my prayers. It's all love. So, yeah. So tonight I have an awesome guest. Uh, my guest is all the way from Boise, Idaho. And, you know, it's one of those things we met through another friend and, you know, I got to test the product and, you know, now I'm going to have her on this show. So waiting patiently from the cigar, from the Hustler Universe podcast network green room, where you'll find the Cigar Hustlers podcast and the Chet and Palmer shit show. Welcome to Herf So Live, Kara from Shakar. Hey, hey, what how are we going doing? On? Not How's it much. going today? It's going. So yeah. Well, hey, I definitely wanted to extend extend my love um, and support to all the people in Florida as well. I know that they're going through some crazy times right now. So, um, you know, anything we can do to help them. I know I have some links from some of my friends down there that I can share later, but uh, they definitely need our help and our support right now. So shout out to everybody in Florida. Most definitely, it's, I, I know quite a few people. You know that you know, we're affected, you know, not as bad as others, but, you know, they're definitely still trying to rebuild things and, you know, get things back to normal, uh, whatever that is. So, so Kara, how are you tonight? I'm doing good. You know, just another day in paradise over here. <laughs> no, just working. And now I actually took a time out from work to come enjoy a cigar and chat with you. So it's perfect. Heck yeah. What are you smoking tonight? Uh, an Atabay. Um, oh. this is, uh, what is this one? The, the Dundies. It's, um, actually a Costa Rican. Yep. Um, yeah. Excellent Torpedo. Cigar. Yeah. Yeah. It's a great cigar. I like it. It's a little, it's mild or medium, I guess I'd say, but I think it's a little, I, I taste a little vanilla. -y. It's a little creamy. It's kind of right up, right, right, right around my style. What I like to smoke. But yeah, I like what do you smoke typically go for life. like that <laughs> profile? uh yeah yeah uh this is this is a profile i typically go for i mean obviously i try everything um we just got back from inner tobacco which was amazing in in dortmund germany and so you know anytime we go to these uh trade shows it's such a great opportunity for me to get out there and expand my knowledge you know in cigars and try a variety of different things from across the globe and inner tobacco is one of the best places to do it have you ever had a chance to go no, I have not. Um, you know, I'm actually, you know, this is actually within my first year of being in the cigar industry full time, you know, working in retail and everything. So I have not even been to PCA yet. So hopefully next year. Yeah. Um, you know, TP, PCA. I mean, yeah. you know, just another I, I can reason go in to go several to capacities. <laughs> but you're in Florida. I mean, you're in the Mecca for right now, in the, as far as the U.S. goes, for housing, you know, all the different uh, cigars and so many lounges and events that go on there. Yeah. And was this you guys' first year at PCA? 
Yeah, so we went to PCA. We didn't do TP this year because we were a little late. Uh, our official product launch was actually at PCA, and then we just did Inner Tobac in 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 Germany. So we'll do um, TPE, PCA, and Inner Tobac next year. Um, I don't know if I'm going to Big Smoke in Vegas, but I know some of our team is. So that's another cool event, um, you know, that Cigar Aficionados puts on. So. Nice. So I'm actually using my shakar right now. So this okay. is the one right here. I'm gonna try to. What are you smoking? I'm smoking an Undercrown Shade because the last cigar okay. that I smoked today was uh, an All Lajero cigar that a friend of mine just came out with called the Nika Reaper, and I needed. I just you know the way I felt today. You know that cigar woke me up earlier. I needed something a little little bit lighter but still had a lot of flavor so undercrown shade and uh i mean it's it's been awesome using this shakar you know you know of course you see my video and everything and that's part of the reason why i wanted to have you on the show to you know just get more details and you know just get the whole story because that's part of what i do i get you know i don't just go and talk about the product i talk about the story of the people behind the product and all that and and all that good stuff. So tell us, like, how long have you guys been in business? You know, how did that whole idea come to fruition with Shakar? Yeah. So originally, like, so our, like I said earlier, our full big launch, like US wise, like the biggest coming out part was PCA this year. And so it had been in the works about six months prior to that. So Mark Ciccarello, one of the owners in the company, he actually owns some uh, lounges and shops here in Boise here locally. And um, he's been a cigar smoker for, I don't know, 20 plus years. And um, basically it came about originally was designed to smoke the whole damn thing, right? Because yep. if you're sitting there and we're enjoying a cigar that we both really like, a lot of it, a lot of cigar smoking for me is the experience and the people you're with, right? And it, it plus the great cigar, right? And so if you're enjoying a cigar that you really love, not all cigars are going to want to smoke all the way down, let's be honest. But when you have one yeah. that you really like, you do. And, you know, for me, you know, using a pick or roach clips or anything like that, I, they just suck, to be honest, in my opinion. You know, you could do it, but you're burning your lips still. It doesn't look as, I guess, classy or whatever. Burning yeah. your lips, burning your fingers. Unless all you have things. a pretty, uh, if, unless you have yeah. a pretty poker some or whatever. Daggers, even then, some of those daggers are pretty legit, though. They have some pretty awesome custom daggers that I've seen. I mean, the designs on them are are, are epic. So I will give them that. Um, so yeah, originally it was designed with that in mind and then uh as we started coming out with the product we realized there's so many utilities and benefits that we can actually get out of the car other than just allowing you to smoke it all the way down so this atabe is a 54 gauge um and it fits perfect it's torpedo um fits perfect in there actually i could probably even go up to a 56 depending on um so one of the great things that I like about it is, especially depending on the type of cigar that I'm smoking, mm -hmm. is it actually, because there's the air gap at the end of the chikar and the tip of where your mouth goes, it allows mm -hmm. more oxygen to flow through that cigar. So what it does in your draw is actually, it actually cools the draw. So it creates a smoother draw for you, which... Um, for me, especially depending on the scar is nicer and an enhanced draw, right? So you can get a, a bigger, smoother draw. That's not as harsh. The other thing that's cool is some of those tobacco bits that we get in our mouth, like it gets, well, trying to go to the camera, they'll get caught right here instead of, you know, always pulling it on your tongue. So you're not going to get as much of that. So that's one of the cool things. Also the way it's designed, we have different stands and things, but like I have one of the stands right here. I can just set it up like this. You can actually set your a uh, chikar up just on its own but if you don't want to put the mouthpiece on a table or something like that um we have a couple of different stand options but you're going to set it up and it's going to allow it to create an even burn all the way down which you know it helps avoid with things like canoeing and things like that in your cigar so um just a couple features that i love about it then we the coolest part is which i don't know did we send you a magnet yeah i have several of them i have my cool box here yeah, and I got several magnets up in here. I had like you know I had all the little so got that. Yep. 
And although I don't have anything around me magnetized per se, I don't, I'm not going to put it on my computer and suck the life out of it <laughs> or anything well, like that. But yeah, uh, no, I, I could show you. So just, well, I think this, I'm going right, to yeah. put you on full screen again here. Yeah. Okay. So I just put the magnet ring on there. I use this all the time for golfing and things, but I'll show y'all real quick. So like, I'm just sitting outside at a table outside of my house and literally it just sticks to it. So it can just set right there and then I can just pick it up and continue smoking. Where's that? There we go. I, see uh, it. Can, I don't know why I'm doing crazy anyways and continue smoking. So anything that's magnetic, like golfing, like the utilities and per like things that keep pictures that people have sent us has been insane. You know, doing yard work, you can stick it to a fence post. We have a guy who, you know, I don't smoke in my car, but he'll stick it to the outside of his car and smoke his cigar. Um, you know, construction workers. I mean, there's so many, I had a guy, I sold, I sold one to a PCA and, um, uh, he sends me a text message and goes, uh, Hey, Kara, I'm in the bathroom. I'm going to send you a quick picture. And I was like, uh, yeah, dude, I don't really want your bathroom pig. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I was like, what is he about to send me? And he sent me a picture of his Chikar stuck to the metal piece inside the st like next to the stall thing. So he could like go to the bathroom and be hands-free. He's like, oh, it was Lord. perfect because like, instead of holding it in my mouth and having, you know, getting smoked out or all the smoke in my face, I just sat it right there. And then, grabbed it when I was done and walked out and I was like, okay, I actually <laughs> never thought about that at all, but thanks for sharing. I guess there's another utility. That's still a little bit odd though. It's very still a odd, odd, but, but everybody has their own thing. I'm not saying, Hey, go take your cigar in the bathroom with you every time. I don't ask too many questions. I was just like, okay, great. If you want to use it in the bathroom, there's an option for you. <laughs> but really, I think with tomorrow our at work. <laughs> Oh gosh. <laughs> yeah, they're gonna be like, what are you doing? Whose cigar is on the wall in here? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah, so that's that's originally why it why it was designed, but it's tapered on the inside. So a cool thing is is like if we were actually not but we were sitting right by side side by side, like if I was like, Hey, let me check shirtless Mike, let me try your cigar. We could literally I could take this cigar out and swap it and out of your chikar and put it in my chikar and we could swap cigars, right? We're not swapping spit or anything like that. It gives each other a chance to try it. Um, and then the other thing that's really cool is a lot of our lounges and shops actually do that for like sampling purposes of new cigars or things like that instead of giving everyone one to sample or whatnot. Um, and then the other thing is we have these little silicone tips on it. So mm. kind of like you would see it like a hookah lounge or something like that. Um, another thing that people could do is I could just hand this to someone, we could swap out the tip and they could try it as well. But what I kind of like is like, depending on like, I don't always carry the stands with me, but I do a lot. Like I could just set it on like the edge, of the, the arm of my chair or something like when I'm in a lounge, instead yeah. of constantly like leaning over to the ashtray or whatever. Speaking of ashtray, we have these pretty cool badass ashtrays that um we just got the prototypes on and i left them at my office because i was gonna show y'all but um they're pretty sweet so the ashtrays and then they have a full holder for your chikar as well so those will be rolling out soon we just got our prototypes in or changing a couple things and then uh they'll be they'll be they'll be live on the website heck yeah so let's uh so let me ask you this are you so you're one of the owners of shakar one of the partners within shakar correct or are you so what, i'm an, what I'm is an your invested role? part yeah i'm an invested party and i do sales okay, but mark cool. mark chicarello which is chakar how so chicarello is mark's last name he's italian um the beginning of his last name is c i c c a R and then it's E L L O. But so that's where Chakar, the name Chakar came in, but it coincidentally also is like the end of cigar. So it's kind of like mushed yeah. and it just kind of worked, I guess. Yeah. I like that, you know, cause I'm, I'm Irish and Italian. So, you know, any, any Italian that's putting out a good product, you know, definitely got to get behind that. So, you know, even, even though I don't have an Italian last name, but I got the Italian attitude and everything else. So There you go. There you go. So, can you so cook? Can, That's the question. Italians uh, no, can cook. No, I but can't you can cook. eat. <laughs> I, can, I can eat. Yeah. I can eat. And, you, you know, I go, I go to my, nobody could cook better than my mother. 
Yeah, I hear that. I, I amen to that. Mom's got it going on. You know, they haven't dialed after all these years. There's something about it. That and grandma. I mean, grandma and mom's cooking. I mean, uh, God rest my grandma's soul. She's not with us anymore, but she could cook like a bad woman. Yeah, I have one grandma left and I happen to live with her. So and she, she's in very good health and everything. So I have to tell her, like, slow down on the cooking sometimes because we have leftovers in the fridge and I'm still trying to eat through the other leftovers. And, uh, you know, God, and she, I, I, I love her and she's the last grandmother I have left. So I'm blessed. Yeah. Actually, I almost say actually I did save her life a few months back. So, oh. Well, I'm glad that she, you did, and I'm glad that she's still here. You enjoy that food. I'm telling you what, enjoy it while it lasts. I sure so do. Eat up. <laughs> I do. So, yeah. Let, so, how long have you personally been smoking cigars, and how did you get interested in cigars? Yeah, so mm. I've I've been smoking cigars on and off for years, but just like here and there, wedding special events, if someone had a cigar, I was like, hey, do you want to go smoke cigars or meet at the cigar lounge here and there? Um, but then really like the past like three years is probably the bulk of my cigar smoking where I started getting a little bit more serious about it. Um, I just started enjoying it. And it, you know, the cigar lounge here, Sturman's in Boise is a fabulous spot. They have live music all the time. They do a ladies night on Wednesdays, um, you know, with wine and cigars. And it's crazy to see how that has grown so much that now when I go in there, um, the amount of females, not on a Wednesday, that are in there smoking cigars. I mean, a lot of times I'll go in there and there's more females than males, which is awesome to see, right? Because I feel like this industry is a little bit male dominated or has been. But I think mm -hmm. we're starting to see a shift in that with so many amazing sisters of the least coming out, you know, that appreciate a good cigar and just want to get involved. Oh, absolutely. So it's so it's been like, you know, the bulk of your cigar smoking has been around like three years or so. So um, let me see what else here. Um, and honestly, that got that uh, got like fast tracked as soon as I, you know, started getting involved in Chikar because, you know, trying to increase my knowledge base and then also going to these events. Um, oh, yeah it obviously is just fast tracked all of that. So it, it's been great. It's a huge learning experience. I'll tell you that, you know, there's so much to learn about this industry. Oh yeah. That's the way I feel too. It's like, you know, there's so much to learn in general and I've been smoking cigars ever since I was 18. I'm 33 now. So been a hot little minute. And, um, yeah. and even though I know a lot, there's still so much to learn. Like I, you know, there's people that you could, there, there's people that have forgotten more about cigars than I'll ever learn in a lifetime. So it's just, those are the people I like to sit under and just, you know, listen to their experiences and all that. So like, have you found anybody so far that you just like to sit under and like learn from their experiences, you know, listen to their stories, like whether it be in the cigar industry or just, you know, an everyday walking into a lounge? Uh, yeah, there's um, a guy, Henry, that goes on disturbance all the time that is just, he's an older dude, goes in there, smokes cigars. He's lived like, he's like a cat. I feel like he's lived nine lives plus, you know, and he's got every story in the book, but he's a wealth of knowledge. Um, honestly, Mark Chicarello, the, the, you know, the guy, primary inventor of Chikar, he is a wealth of knowledge. He's been smoking cigars so long. So he's really helped me on my cigar journey as far as understanding profiles and the different leaves and binders and, you know, depending on the regions and all those types of things. Um, Cause I've been to tobacco farms and things like that in Cuba and a couple other spots, but um, this, that was before I really was diving into this industry. Um, so I think now going back to do something like that, I would appreciate it 10 X more than I did even then, you know? Um, so, yeah, I think, I think, Everybody in this industry, you can learn a lot from. I learn a lot at these shows from all the different cigar manufacturers, from the aficionados to the master rollers to, you know, just all the conversations and things like even with our product, they try it and they'll say, but what about this? And they'll ask questions that I never thought about. Um, or maybe it could potentially solve an issue for them that I didn't even know was an issue or something. So, um, you know, just getting educated on the different types and uh the different people and i don't know regions really and culturally like when when people smoke or how often they smoke i think it's interesting um so yeah i think there's something to learn from everybody in the industry that's been doing it a long time you know 
Oh yeah. Now, t- um, t- so we talked a little bit about inner tobacco and everything. So, you know, just how long was that? Like, what was you guys' experience like? And uh, have you guys really um, spread out more across, like, you know, the European market? You know, more, or was it was just kind of like a getting your feet wet a little bit, and you got a little bit of business out of that. Yeah. So actually, Inner Tobacco, both PCA and Inner Tobacco were fabulous shows. But I will say with Inner Tobacco, um, a lot of great things came out of Inner Tobacco as far as our reach and our expansion into Europe. So we're in the process now of finalizing some new 3PLs over in Europe um, that will handle obviously our shipping and stuff. And then um, we met a ton of different distri- distributor distributors, <laughs> distributors, <laughs> if I could talk. Um, distributors over there because uh the uk operates a little different than the us as far as far as distribution so in the us um you can have one main distributor or distro you know that can supply all of, to all of the us the way that europe is broken down is more so it's like the us if every state had was required to have their own distro right so you have to know a lot more distros in each country and so those were the connections that we were making in our tobacco that um we are solidifying those now a lot of them we've we've got a lot of big orders so the expansion is there and we're really excited about it because once we have the rest of those in place um you know we have people ordering distros it you know Lebanon, you know, shipping to South Africa, Nicaragua, all over Europe, uh, UK. Um, So it is expanding. Um, It was honestly, it was like, it's fast. It put us in the fast track. Like, oh, crap, we got a lot of stuff to figure out right away. But in the best way possible, I feel like those growing pains, you know, you're either going to you're going to do it at some point in the business, right? Um, It just Mm -hmm. happened to be a little more expedited than we thought, which is good um, in a lot of ways, because it just forces you to figure it out and to get the right systems in place. Yeah, most definitely. I could definitely relate to that, you know, especially with just me being an influencer, but also coming on board, working at a retail shop, like, um, you know, there's certain things that, you know, I've helped with to make things a little bit more efficient and all that. And, and like, you know, I run the social media for the shop. So it's, you know, I've learned how to, to system that and everything. So, I mean, with with growth, obviously, you know, you start running around like a chicken with your head cut off. But, yeah, you know, that's definitely, of you know, that's definitely yeah. not a bad thing because, you know, it means that, you know, you're getting out there more and, you know, can't go wrong with that. Yeah, I mean, it's it's the nature of learning, right? You just kind of got to figure it out, take it day by day, and, you know, you just keep plucking away at it, and eventually, you know, and I feel like the biggest thing, too, is this industry, it's such a big, small industry, it's mm-hmm. a lot of networking, because what I'm realizing is this person knows XYZ that then can link us here that can help then I have a guy here that we can all facilitate all these things. Right. And so yeah. it's kind of like putting a big puzzle together, you know, going back to people that I, you know, admire and look up to in the industry uh, that I, that I was thankful to spend more time with in uh, Germany actually was Rob from Boveda um, in the crew there. So they're awesome guys. Like we went out to a, a lounge and spent some time with them um, and their wealth of knowledge, you know, they've been doing this for a long time. They know a lot of people. Um, Actually, when we were just in Germany, Rob helped me because he was like, asked me, do you, do you, you know, if I retrohale and I'm like, yeah, I've tried it. I don't really like it because, you know, it burns, it burns my nostrils too much. He's like, well, you're doing it wrong. And I was like, oh, OK. And I was like, OK, yeah. So he showed me how to retrohale properly. And now if it's the right cigar, I honestly find myself doing it all the time. Um, so, you know, it's little things like that that help enhance in my opinion, your smoking experience just by sitting down and smoking a cigar with some of these people um, and getting educated and hearing what they have to say. Oh, absolutely. I actually was retrohaling because whenever I smoke a, a new cigar to me, I like to retrohale. So, you know, when I smoked that all the hero cigar today, I retrohaled that. And actually, surprisingly, it didn't make me tear up or nothing. Like sometimes that will happen with a stronger yeah. cigar. I was yeah, like, definitely. I was like, I'm a real man. I'd sm- I would smoke. I'm smoking an all the hero cigar. I retrohaled it and I didn't tear up. <laughs> 
champion good <laughs> just for me a beast over there good for me good for me, <laughs> good it's, for the, me. it's it's the small wins you know you gotta appreciate it but yeah um yeah so it it was great and and honestly one of the things that i love too anywhere you go right in a different city it doesn't have to be a different country but going in and seeing these different lounges and shops um from seeing the you know the popular cigar brands that they carry um that they you know if you talk to the guys in there, you know, what they recommend as far as you tell them what you like, like a medium body, this, that, whatever. And then to see what they recommend. I always like starting there just to see what they recommend, you know, and I've come across like new cigars that I, some of them, there's one, and I'm trying to think of the name of it right now. It's uh, Lauren uh, something, but it was, I'll, I'll look it up here in a minute. I have the, I have the band still, but I can't find them anywhere in the U.S. I think they're only in Europe, but it's a phenomenal cigar. I've had three different ones of theirs, and I found them all only in Europe. So it's things like that that you just kind of learn along the way. Um, Rob had one as well. They had one. I tried his. I swapped it out in our Chikars, and he was like, this is really good. And I was like, yeah, let me try it. And then I tried it and was like, wow, this is really good. I want to get one of those. So then I got one of those. And then a couple of days later in a lounge, I got, I went in, they had them as well. I tried a different one and did that a couple more times and they're great. I went to three cigar lounges here and can't find them anywhere. So I looked online and I didn't see any in this region. So it might be maybe in Florida. I don't know. I can send you, send you the name of it and then. Maybe you yeah, can find it. I'm pretty well connected in Florida, so you never know if you yeah. find the name. I, I might have yeah. a guy. I might have a guy for yeah. that. You, I feel like I feel like you got a lot of guys. I feel like you're the guy that knows a lot of guys. You're that networker. That that's what I do. That's that's like yeah. I literally I came from nothing. Game. Like I you know, I'm still working my way up to the stop, still building, you know, not not where I want to be yet, but still po. But you know the fa- you know what makes me rich is you know the people that I- it's not about what you know or what you have it's about you know who you know and so on and so forth so yeah absolutely it's it's not about you know everybody knows a lot of people right there's a lot of people but it's the quality of the people that you choose to associate with that I think makes the difference and I, I feel like from what I've watched from your show and everything you got you have access and bring on a lot of quality individuals so no, now those people are in your network which allows you to be that net weaver right yep. um, and we're always going to be continuous working right if, if we if there's no work left to be done it'd be boring like what would yep. you do you know what I mean so absolutely. It, you again you just pluck away at it every day and some days you're gonna win the whole day and other days maybe not but (laughs) if you can just count the little wins and keep moving forward i guess that's all that counts oh yeah most definitely Uh, i gotta take a quick break to shout out my sponsor i'm gonna put you back down below and put their logo up and then we got more to talk about you know i generally keep the show 45 minutes to an hour so we got some more topics on the plate so be right back all right so Herf Zone Live is sponsored by Nomos Cigars, rated 91 in Cigars and Spirits magazine. Nomos is a full-body 6x56 cigar that features a rich, full flavor accomplished with a high-quality construction and exclusive aging process. Once the fine cigar is born, it immediately begins our exclusive Nomos aging process nap. While each cigar naps, it continues to develop its unique aroma and flavor that sets itself apart from any other cigar the world over. It is a delicious medium smoke resulting from the finely aged Cameroon wrapper and blend of an eight-year-old Seco Dominican filler and five-year-old Nicaragua Criollo filler. The Indonesian Sumatran binder finishes the cigar ingredients with the finest quality tobacco available. This exclusive blend provides a beautiful smoke right down to the last nub. Check out nomoscigars.com for info on where to find retailers that carry Nomos cigars. That carry Nomos cigars. Orders also available on their website. Also follow them on Instagram at Nomos Cigars. Alrighty. So yeah. Okay. So now that we're Mike, back I will here, say you have like, were you a DJ in another life or something, or like a radio no, I, host? I've I worked like... a lot in call centers. And okay. I used to rap when I was a lot younger. No way. And, Do you still yeah. rap? No, I don't still rap. No, I, I oh. feel like if I didn't like get out there by a certain age, I shouldn't be out there. You know, I, there's other more productive things and better things to spend my energy on, especially 
when I saw the state of hip hop changing, like a lot of these, you know, rappers, like these younger rappers, like they do all this mumble rapping and stuff like that. Some of that is okay. Like the new style is somewhat okay. You know, I like, I like it if it's done a certain way, but no, I, I was never a mumble rapper. So I felt like, you know, I'm too old to be out there trying to mumble rap. Ah, No, you're never too old. I would love to see some of your old videos of you rapping. That's amazing. Honestly, I I mean, I appreciate the new the new school rap, but I feel like there's something to be said about the OGs in the game, right? In the way that it yeah, used well, to be done. That, that's what all I listen to is like old music and stuff. So actually, speaking of music, so when you know, when we were doing the stories or whatever, I hit you up yesterday. <laughs> and I was like, is this gonna be a competition to see who could come up with better music for their story? And she was like, It is now. You were it like, is It is now. now. It is so, now a competition. Let's yeah, go. So what, what type of music are you into? Oh, man, I'm all over the map. I literally can appreciate something about most types of music. I can get down with some R&B. I'm mostly like old school stuff, um, old school hip hop, things like that. I do appreciate, you know, um, newer EDM, things like that. I just went to uh, uh, like, you know, all, all different kinds of festivals, but I like country after living in Texas for so long, you just start adapting to some of the country, not all country. Um, I think it really just depends on my mood, you know, old, old school, green day, Nirvana. I love that stuff. Sublime. I mean, I still love those things. So that's what I grew up on as a kid. Um, but yeah, I love a little bit of everything. I, I think it just depends. Like I can get down with even some, some jazz. It just depends on my mood. Really. I kind of base it off that and, how I'm feeling and what, yeah. you know, what I'm, what, what, what's the vibe? What kind of energy am I trying to create? Am I drinking wine in my hot tub? Am I, you know, getting ready to get pumped up to go to the club <laughs> or have drinks <laughs> with my girlfriend or am I just having dinner or, you know, I say that like I go to a club a lot. I don't, I'm old. Uh, <laughs> you know, I think I still got it in me, but. Uh, <laughs> I'm kind of over the club scene, but if I throw a party, yeah. <laughs> it kind of, it kind of reacts, it acts like a club. Like yeah. Last year I threw, you know, my birthday bash down at, in Boynton Beach at Smoke Inn on a Wednesday. And actually Abe was very he was very impressed with the fact that I brought people out on a Wednesday. Like I'm from out of town. We I had people from out of town that was in for the great smoke early and all yeah. that. And I had that thing look, looking like the club. Like, you know, I I kept my shirt on for like just the first part because obviously, <laughs> you know, in the club, you know, if you get there early, it's not gonna be that thick till hour yeah. or two later so once the crowd got there i had a special i had my dj he had like a special intro and everything and then uh you know i went live and had that intro playing i got shirtless and then after at that point it was it was over <laughs> okay so that brings that brings the question i i didn't get a chance to ask you this okay how did shirtless mike come about like how how did that the trend start i love it by the way um yeah. it definitely sets you apart and is like your your niche right like it works but yeah. how did that how did that come about it's just me i i pretty yeah. much when i'm at home I, I don't wear shirts and i would be in like a bunch of cigar groups and just post a picture of myself smoking shirtless and people started you know either trolling me or you know or you know they get to know <laughs> me and so people's like oh it's shirtless mike and so i was like yeah. i'm gonna just turn that into a movement and i love that and then now and like, it works and all the major players that know shirtless Mike, I got people, you know, lo I'm known locally plus, you know, around the world now. So, um, you know, it's, 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 it's a lot of fun. You know, I, I just, I love people. So whenever I go to a major cigar event, if I'm like walking around shirtless, like everybody wants to stop and take pictures and it's a of lot course. of fun. It is and, a lot you know, of fun. You know, I like I to use that. being known to help other people to get out there, you know, just like, you know, I invited you on the show and everything yeah, so that. help people get out you know a lot of people the viewership isn't that good when it's uh live all the time but after the fact especially when i have women on my show like the views really skyrocket because you know people love to see what a lady of the leaf has to say and all that so the if you go if you go on my youtube channel you see all the highest viewed shows all have women yeah, <laughs> yeah. all the ladies it's so inter it's so interesting um how i mean i guess it's just the nature of how we uh, the society we live in but yeah i've went back and wa watched a lot of your shows you do some pretty great interviews um you know good questions and like i said you get good caliber people which is 
which is great. That feeds into why you're such a good people person and why you do what you do, right? You're Mm -hmm. naturally a connector um, and easy to talk to. I think that's the biggest thing, right? Um, You know, being newer in this industry, for sure. It's like, I talk to people all the time and for work and things, but it's different going live or doing different things like that. You know, I will say when I went on Big Ash with Big Ash, that was, she was like, oh, do you want to do a live with me? I'm like, well, yeah, I do. Haven't really done many lives <laughs> you know what I mean? yeah. so I was like not I'm not typically like a shy person but I was like okay uh, a little nervous but it, you know as you start talking to people but you make me feel very comfortable so it's easy to have a conversation yeah I mean that's that's why I do what I do and actually it was kind of because I didn't have any headphones and if like I'm I'm not really hard of hearing but you know sometimes my hearing goes in and out so it's like I could barely hear and all that. So I was just sitting in a lounge. I was I was trying my best to hear what was yeah. going on without being too awkward. But, you know, this is my element right here and all yeah. that. So how did you and Big Ash just meet? Did you guys meet at PCA officially or did you just like just yeah. start on Instagram? Yeah. So, um, well, I had followed her uh, on Instagram for a while. You know, she puts she's awesome. She puts out great content. Her, you know, barbecue stuff is amazing i'm like i need to use some of these recipes so i was following her they had the opportunity to meet her and she's even whoop sorry I'm getting People a phone call you. popular sorry but and of course it's like um Sorry, I, uh, yeah, I had the opportunity to meet her at PCA and, uh, you know, she's just as amazing, if not better in person than she is live. She is a jack of all trades. She's got a lot of stuff going on in her life. You know, this isn't her primary gig and um, she's also a wealth of knowledge, right? The, the, the amount of yeah. stuff that she's learned and she knows all kinds of people in the industry. Um, so when she invited me on, that was a really cool opportunity. We sent her, you know, a uh, it, we collabed with her to do uh, one of our big ash boxes with a Chikar kit in it. Um, so we started kind of collabing on that and talking that way. And then she invited me on that live, which is then we added, you know, she, you and her friends and uh, she yeah. added you on there. And that's kind of how we first got an intro. And then, you know, we got you a Chikar piece and you didn't, yeah. you did a great candid review for us, which we definitely appreciate, you know, um, Anytime there's an accessory, I think, it, or something new in this industry, uh, you know, because this industry has been around for so long that, um, it, you know, although we're an evolving economy and world and things are going tech driven and there's always new stuff going on, it's one of those uh, environments that is driven by a lot of old school ways of doing things, right? So a new accessory really, um, kind of shakes things up and some people are, you know, ad- you either adapt with it or you don't and some people like it and or haven't adapted yet and things like that but it's it's cool to see and get in people's hands like yours and then get reviews um that really helps motivate us and let us know that we're we're on something good so i appreciate your review on no on problem. our product the cigar industry is one of those industries that it's it's kind of it that's moving forward with technology but it's still one of the old school, you know, hand to hand transactions, you know, one of the few industries that uses reps and everything. And even some companies have elected to, you know, they just have somebody that's basically not even a rep. They're just an order taker. They come in, just take an order, blah, blah, blah. And but it's one of those few companies that's like that. But it's like the cigar industry will definitely be even more unstoppable. It's came a long way in the time that, yeah. you know, that I've been smoking cigars, you know, from the like I I didn't really get on on I was on social media but just not in the cigar aspect of things. I didn't realize how much how many people were on social media specifically relating to cigars uh until I was probably like mid 20s, you know, ish and yeah. you know so I've seen it go from that to you know I just went from a relatively unknown person and then I started you know, I wasn't even trying to put myself out there. And then I seen peop- more people, you know, that just became well known, you know, the influencer, you know, series and, you know, or not series, but the influencer stages of things. And of course, you know, people come and go, have have come and go, you know, they, there's, there's been, there's been very few powerhouse influencers, you know, like your Brian Glenn's or your, um, 
where you're uh what's uh what is her name out in california um delicia cigar vixen oh you know, yeah she, she, she's like the OG of like cigar yep. influencer. She's got like an Amazon, pro- like she's like beyond a cigar influencer, yeah. you know, basically. Yeah. She's like big Massive. time. So she kind of, yep. people like that pave the way for um, people yes, like absolutely. me and, and all that. So, I, you know, and the, it's, it's just awesome. So, like, ha- have you, you guys know what I think seen? Is cool. Oh, go ahead. Go, no, no, you go ahead. No, I I think what's cool about the cigar community, especially when it comes to online, is it really feels like everyone has each other's back and everyone's there for everybody, at least from my experience so far. Like people are happy to share and be like, follow this person and like this or check this out. And, you know, the response from people is has been very positive on all fronts, especially me coming in with like new quote unquote into this industry, especially on a, a social, you know, platform of, of sorts. Um, you know, as far as people tagging me in things or even with our products or even just cool cigars and stuff, um, the amount of resources that are out there, I'll say I've learned a lot just by hopping on people's lives or listening to their videos or seeing what cigar they're smoking or their review on it. And then I'm like, Oh, okay. Like, I'm going to go check that out, you know, from anywhere from products, accessories to actually cigars or education on, you know, rolling and different fillers and all any anything across the board. Um, I think there's a wealth of knowledge out there, you know, on social media that um, if you're newer in the industry and wanting to learn, I'll just start. I, did, I had no idea it was such a big world in social media as far as cigars and now that i see it it's like i just keep finding more and more amazing people to follow across the globe right so Mm -hmm. it is pretty it is pretty cool um but everyone's been so nice and so kind and everyone's kind of like wants to help promote and keep this industry alive um so yeah i think it's great most definitely you know so going back into the topic of influencers and and all that now there's a difference between somebody who's on social media and somebody who's an actual influencer. Influencer is somebody Absolutely. who is able to put something out there, an idea, or you know, be like, oh, you should get this, and sales actually occur and all that. So, yeah, what definitely. has you guys' experience been with? You know, I, I know you work, you know, partnered with Big Ashes and everything, and uh, through that, and I'm sure you've partnered with some other influencers. What have what what has your experience been on that front, you know, with the social media, with, you know, having a new company, has that actually made a difference, you know, cause influencer marketing is a little cheaper than, you know, going to cigar aficionado or, you know, some print magazine, yeah. they charge hundreds of thousands of dollars when the influencer, you know, will be like, you know, they may charge this or whatever, or they just like give you some product and, you know, put it out there type thing. Like, so what has you guys' experience been like with that? So I think personally, I think it really depends on the influencer. I think anything that you try to do, you try to get with like, like-minded people. Right. Um, it, so I think it depends on the influencer because we've had some where they've kind of put it out there, but not necessarily sales necessarily came from it. They have it. You may be a big following base, but not necessarily a big like purchasing base from their following necessarily. Right. And then there's others that, you know, or like, Hey, you know, with big, with big ash, it's been great because, um, you know, I've had people like, Hey, I saw you, you know, on big Ash's thing or on big ashes live or this and that, or you're, Oh, you're doing that box with her. Um, even at inner back, I had two people come to me and say that they saw me on a live or that they saw the review review that Rob from Boveda did, or, you know, different things like that. So, um, you know, there is a huge capacity for, orders and things like that to come in through the right um partnering i guess i should say yeah most definitely uh so with let's talk a little bit about um you know just locally have you guys found any local support you know you guys have a pretty big audience like as far as you know locally because normally people will start local and then branch out you know with you know whatever they're doing um, so tell us about that. Yeah, locally, I mean, obviously here in Boise is kind of where the was the, our main beta testing center for this product, right? So when we first got our prototypes in to everything else, it was going to these lounges or these shops and, you know, 
talking to people about it, putting it in people's hands. That's the biggest thing with a product like this is actually getting it in their hands and letting them try it. Because some people kind of see it. It's not a product that if you just sit on a shelf necessarily is going to sell itself. I mean, maybe if someone has seen it or tried it somewhere else or anything else, they get the idea of it. But when they actually use it and they notice the enhanced draw, the open you know, the flavor profile, how much it opens up in a cigar that, you know, you might smoke like we at PCA, we had um, these master rollers that one guy, he, this one master roller, he smoked the same cigar, two cigars uh, pretty much daily for the past 15, 20 years. And when he used a car, he's like, I actually get a more open flavor profile. I'm tasting a flavor in there that I've in this same cigar that I've never tasted before in a good way. You know, you, you don't want to change the, the cigar by any means, you know, that they already have it down to a science and a craft and put forward an amazing product. It's art. It's, it's enhancing that even more or opening it up even more. Um, that's a cool thing that, you know, we have the opportunity to do through this, through this accessory. So I think it's just, um, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> did, yeah. I answer, did I answer your question or did I skip over it? I don't know. Sometimes I'm no, no. Hey, I mean, you, I'm like, no, I'm no you squirrel. answered it and everything. <laughs> so, you know, so, so you guys, you guys sell online through the mm. website, obviously. Have you guys had a lot of, um, you know, brick and mortars, you know, bringing the product in and everything, or has is is that still slow to come with that? Uh, we do have a handful of brick and mortar in the U.S., uh, you know, across the U.S., we have a handful of brick and mortar that do carry it. Obviously, we're always looking to expand that. Um, a lot of our lounges and shops, um, you know, are expanding through things like PCA. Um, we're, again, we're working on our UK expansion. We're getting those additional three PLs and stuff set up and hopefully should have that finalized in the next week or two. Um, and then once that happens, it'll be, you know, uh, a lot more globally, but here, yeah, we definitely want to get more involved in events that, um, cigar lounges have, um, and are happy to come, you know, showcase our products and things like that as well. But, uh, we have some fabulous lounges, uh, you know, from Canada, we have Canada, you know, all, all over the East coast, um, here, definitely here in Idaho, um, as well as our surrounding States. So we have a little bit here and there, I mean, but the U S is massive. So obviously there's a ton, ton more room for opportunity. We're not there yet. Like we've started, but there's never, you know, never enough. Right. Yeah. We want to, we want to get it in many, as many people hands as we can, but you know, we're doing some cool things and partnering with some really cool uh, people doing some white labeling stuff, even, you know, eight lounge in Las Vegas. They're an awesome lounge if you, if you've ever been. And um, I've you know, been to Vegas be in like years. Like I, when I went to Vegas, I was not old enough to participate in Vegas yet. <laughs> Yeah, you know, yeah, my uncle yeah. lives there, so I got I got to go to Vegas. Maybe that's a blessing. I don't know. <laughs> um, no, Vegas is awesome, but you know, Eight Lounge there is it's a it's an amazing lounge, great ambiance, cool vibe, good people. They make really great cocktails. They have a good selection um, of cigars. Um, you know, and they get a variety of people in there, you know, it's Vegas. So everything from celebrities to, you know, NFL players to just your regular smokers to whatever, um, you know, and we're going to do some collabs with them on white labeling some stuff for them. And so we have a lot of different avenues that we're pursuing to, to push it out there and getting creative with the idea. We also have, are working on something really exciting, uh, that we're going to roll out, um, that we're partnering with some really cool people on that uh, are big in the industry, big names that you would know, but I can't say too much yet. So uh, I will let you know as soon as I get the official go ahead on um, letting the cat out of the bag, I'll let you know. So then maybe we can hop on another live or something. Heck yeah. You know, then, you know, and I'll definitely have you one another time. We'll bring some more of the team on at times, you know, cause th th there's certain people that, you know, I definitely repeat guests on the show. I've, you know, had quite a few people that were repeat guests. So, yeah, you know, it's yeah. a lot of fun, well, especially with, you know, a company, you know, it has, you know, different people, different perspectives and and all that. Definitely. So, yeah, I would definitely recommend, um, you know, Tyson or Mark or does. I mean, we have a variety of people on our team that would be awesome, you know, that. Mark, he's a wealth of knowledge, so he'd be a great one. Again, he's been smoking cigars for 20 years, so his knowledge base is going to go way further than mine as far as the cigar industry goes. So he'd be a good one to uh, 
talk to as well eventually. But yeah, and maybe he'd be the guy to have uh, come on when we roll out our new um, stuff. Most definitely. So just got a few more questions, you know, then we'll be at the hour here. So uh, outside of, you know, cigars, I know you talked a little bit before we hopped on, got the show started about traveling and all that. So, but what, what outside of cigars do you like to do personally besides, you know, cigars just outside of, you know, the business outside of cigars, period. Like, yeah. What are some uh, of your so, passions? Uh, traveling. I mean, all over the world is, uh, you know, uh, my, one of my biggest passions as far as career I in, in real estate, both um, a real estate broker in Texas and as well as Idaho. That's what I've been doing for, you know, 13 plus years. Um, but really travel, I will say, is my hobby. Hiking, anything outdoors. I snowboard. I like fishing, whitewater rafting, uh, you know camping any i mean anything i'm getting ready to head to um norway in a couple weeks and i dive i go scoop i scuba dive so uh i'm diving with killer wells while they migrate across the top of norway so i'm doing a live aboard and we're basically we dive with them every day as they migrate across norway and then you live on this boat for eight days and then i'll be traveling there and then i'm gonna go up through norway and then meet some of my friends and uh, Finland. I met these really cool people in Finland uh, that are Finnish uh, when I went to Antarctica early th earlier this year. And they were uh, on that trip and they're really cool individuals. So I'm going to go meet up with them and they're going to take me around Finland. And yeah, just that's it. That's probably one of my main passions. But That sounds like fun. I love killer whales. Uh, my dad lives in Washington State. And so we went on like a whale watching trip or whatever. And they have they have like a policy if you don't see any killer whales you know you could keep coming back for free until you do it's like yeah, 50 bucks a awesome. person very affordable and uh we saw a ton of killer whales out there they were you know jumping and all that <laughs> they're yeah, breaching I'm, yeah i'm super excited i've um i've never been that close or dove with something that close like in person other than being in a cage, I guess necessarily, like I went, uh, uh, cage diving with great whites in Cape town and a couple other spots, but I like as far as swimming with them, I know that they're not aggressive. Um, but you know, they're just massive. So when you're underwater, you realize like what a small place you hold in this world when you're next to something <laughs> of that size, you know? Yeah, most definitely. It sounds like a lot of fun and, and all that. So whenever Whenever you're, you know, sitting down to relax and you like to have, you know, a drink or whatever, what are you drinking and what are you smoking just on your personal time? Yeah, so uh, I drink wine, uh, red wine or white. I tend to go with red. Um, I also love a, a good classic, you know, Hendrix and tonic. Um, yeah, I, 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 I'm one of those people... I. You know, I drink beer, but not very often. If I do, it's like on a hot day and I just, you know, every, every once in a while you're just mood for an ice cold beer, you know? Yeah. Um, but yeah, so it just, it really, it depends. It depends on my mood. But I, in the hot tub, I drink wine. Heck yeah. Sounds like a good, sounds like a good night. Yeah. Drink some wine. Yeah. Relax. And then, you know, you're in the hot out. tub and you get out the hot tub, you feel that tipsiness when you stand up. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, what about you? What do you What do you do in your free time? Uh, outside of cigars, you know, I like to go to concerts at times. I don't go to a whole lot of concerts, but most recently, I've went to uh, Red Hot Chili Peppers. A friend of oh, mine. Oh, they're that's, so uh, good live. Yeah, it was it was really good. The opening acts. I mean, I'm not that big of a rock person, but I know enough Red, Red Hot Chili Peppers where I'm like, okay, I'm going. I got invited. You know, my friend got some free tickets from somebody and they needed somebody else to go. I was like, why the hell not? It was raining, but, you know, it, it quit raining after a while. And by the time the concert started, and it was a lot of fun. Uh, I was up in the nosebleed section, but – and I have bad anxiety. So me trying to go up bleacher-style seating, you know yeah. – it's kind of freaky because of my anxiety, but once I got settled up there and all that, then I went down the, the last couple songs that way. I don't have to like rush or be in a crowd of people. And then, yep. you know, <laughs> I feel you. What is it about bleachers? I get anxiety too when I'm going up and down those stairs, especially when they're like the uneven ones. You know how like one's bigger than <laughs> the other. Yeah. I just have like this this idea that I'm just gonna eat shit or trip down the stairs you know i have this like fear of that for some reason anytime i'm in a stadium i'm like i just need to get over this but it does every time 
it hasn't happened yet, thank God. But I'm like, stop thinking that way because one day you're just going to trip yourself. <laughs> yeah, and then, then there was a crowd of people going down the escalator, which escalators are fine for me or whatever, but like, it's like still like still like going up or going down like a really big escalator like you know i just have to make sure i calm myself you know still better than going downstairs though but I don't yeah know. absolutely, and plus, absolutely. I, I, plus i you know i also i got a secondary podcast that i do with a friend of mine uh, we don't we don't do, do it live yeah it's called gangsters and cigars we talk about like organized crime you know not just mafia stuff but oh um, i love this yeah, i need he, to check he, this out yeah, so that's on YouTube as well. It's a separate channel and all that. And you know, we just re we record it once a week. And Thursday we got a we got a, uh, a an event that we're doing at my shop. That's my day off, but we're doing the event at my shop. So, and we're gonna uh, record you know episode. Have some people there, you know, way to get people in the doors at the shop. And you know, we're gonna smoke the CAOs Consigulary. They used yeah, to be the branded as the Sopranos edition. Before yep. they lost the rights to be able to use the Sopranos edition, but right, it used to be a lot better of a cigar. It's still a good cigar, but you know it is what it is. And I, I like to listen to a lot of podcasts, and you know I like Vlad What's your TV. go-to? What's your go-to podcast? Do you have a main one that you like, or I watch a lot of Vlad TV. Like I, I joined. Okay. He has like a premium, uh, like for like five bucks a month, and then you know normally he chops up the interviews, but th with this. The day that, you know, the first clip is released, you know, if you remember, you can watch the whole entire interview. So he interviewed like Sammy Gravano, Sammy the Bull. And, you know, he he interviews people within hip hop, outside of hip hop. Um, How you know, fun. You know, I need to check I mean, that out. Yeah, Vlad TV is, uh, and you know, people kind of, and I also like No Jumper, which No Jumper, he interviews like a lot of these mumble rappers, but he also has some good, he has some good interviews with people that interest, so I only watch the stuff that like, you know, the people that interest me, like a lot of old school rappers, and uh, Adam22, he interviewed The Game, you know, stuff oh, like nice. that, you know, stuff like that, That that's like yeah. my generation, you that's know, your, not yeah. mumble rappers. <laughs> Right. Yeah. No, I love that. How interesting. Okay. So this crime, this crime, uh, what did you say? Organized crime podcast yeah. that we're talking about? Okay. Tell me more about that. How do you find, how did you get into that? How do you find the information on that? I don't know enough about organized crime, but I am fascinated. Well, you know, we by. talk about like diff, like, uh, we have different guests, you know, like not necessarily people with, like mafia stuff, but like my, my friend who's the host, he, uh, he, he's a retired cop. And, um, so he'll talk about, you know, different like murder cases from the past, you know, that he's able to talk about, um, you know, like we talked, we had an episode about the grim reaper, you know, and what he was doing, it was real gory, but, um, we also, there's a guy that his family's from Cuba and basically about like the mafia's involvement in Cuba, stuff like that. Um, you know, so he he pretty much comes up with the topics. I'm the co-host and tech guy, because you know I run this show by myself. So it's like I, my time is limited. So I make sure you know. So he's he he does most of the stuff on this. I'm just the co-host, and right. um, you know, so we got a guy. We're gonna interview on Thursday. He is a re, he's a retired. Like he basically um, knows how to you know stop bombs from going off like he, i forgot his title he's like a bomb something specialist like you know so it's like it's gonna be about all things that go boom you know yeah, basically so fascinating it's, you know so yeah. it's not just organized crime it's kind of just different right everything stuff like that and uh we had you know we, we talked about uh we talked about Oh, I can't. I can't. Uh, two hours of sleep is not good for my brain. But um, yeah, we no, talked no, about no, the guy who got you know murdered, you know, in the in the barber's chair. You know, that was you know part of the mafia and all that. So I know the guy's wild, name. I just it's wild how much of that stuff is still so much alive and it, you know happens all the time. We just don't know about it. You know, or are not privy to it you you probably are much more than me but uh being involved in the podcast and things like that but yeah it it is pretty wild oh yeah it's a lot of fun you know just something different you know he 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 you know he comes to my shop and he was like hey i want to start a podcast you know once you be the co-host and i was like all right 
I already got StreamYard, and so we don't have to, you know, we could just record on here and and just easy. That was it. Yeah, yep. easy. I love it. Well, good for you. You're doing all kinds of things. I love it. Busy yep. man. Staying busy, yep. <laughs> so that's why, like, two hours of sleep, like, is not that good. Actually, I took a small, small nap, and I set my alarm and everything and uh, before the show, but it's like... It's still, you know, I'm used to getting more sleep, so. <laughs> yeah, well, get some rest tonight. <laughs> oh, for sure. Can. Oh, yeah, for yeah. sure. Now, before Why don't I just get... drink that coffee? <laughs> oh, I'm going to take some melatonin, so. <laughs> yeah, there you go, there you go, there you go. But uh, before we get up off of here, you know, if you want to talk about anything else, you know, real quick, the floor is yours. And, uh, you know, anything else that you may have, you know, tell people where to find you on social media, all that type of stuff. Okay. Yeah, definitely. So um, my social is uh, Chikar Life Share, Chikar underscore Life underscore Share. Uh, my name is Kara. A lot of people call me Share. Long story, got nicknames. But anyway, so it's Chikar Life Share. And then the main uh, page is just Chikar Life. And then our website is chikarlife.com. So you can order products and stuff through there. Uh, check out the variety of things that we have. Um, but yeah. That's pretty much it. Yeah, I put the website in the description. That way it's, you know, right there. So, you know, that way Perfect. any anybody, if anybody Googles Shakar Life or anything like that, I, this show will come up. So Perfect. And, and awesome. I've already done the that. Google analytic, the search engine optimization and, uh, you know, on, you know, YouTube and all that. And my video is comes up like is it's not number one it's like number two or three or something like that so it's it's up there Perfect. So. awesome well hey i appreciate that so you are <laughs> definitely a wealth of knowledge and i appreciate you having us on and for your review and everything else oh yeah no problem i appreciate you for coming on the show and uh, everybody definitely. that's tuned in live anybody that's tuned in after appreciate you guys for tuning in if this is your first time Make sure you hit that subscribe button on YouTube. Follow me on all my social media right there on the screen there. And you guys have a good night. And I'll let you know when we're not live so we can talk that real shit.